Hey, welcome to the Healing She Got Faith show. This is Lily, your founder of Healing She Got Faith, and of course, your host of the Healing She Got Faith talk show. Welcome back. Um, so, if you are here listening on today, I, I guess today would be July 18th. I am currently in Mexico. And I am not recording in Mexico, so I pre-recorded this, <laughs> which I'll be honest, most of the time I pre-record my shows anyway. When I was on the radio platform, I used to record like a month in advance just so like I wouldn't miss it because obviously like when you're not working for yourself, you're on a different platform, you have to kind of plan differently. Um, I do try to record closer to the day so that like you can get my authentic feelings and emotions but sometimes when I know like my month is pretty busy I won't um I don't want to miss on an episode I want to be pretty consistent on releasing my episodes on Mondays so that's just a little background I know like when I was on a radio platform people would be like oh is it live and it definitely was not live it was definitely pre-recorded and I was pretty honest about that um I would have loved to experience being live and maybe in the future, maybe I'll be on a different platform and uh, be able to experience a live recording. But for right now, I am currently in, when you will be hearing this, I will be in Mexico. I will be on my first international business trip with Healing She Got Faith. I was so honored to, to be asked to be a keynote speaker and I'm speaking on the power of grief and Typically, when I am out the country, I really don't um, like mess with my phone. I don't be on social media. I don't do anything. It really is a time for me to reflect, grow, and experience things. And we're actually going to talk about that today. Um, next week, when you come back in here, you'll hear about my experience. But today, I just kind of want to talk about traveling, business, and healing. And so we will. That will be the topic for today. Um, so with that being said, y'all know, I am not going to miss out on an icebreaker. So I'm pretty excited. I got three new decks. I got Butterfly Affirmations um, by Blue Angel Publishing. I actually bought all these from my bookshop online. I got the Body Gratitude Deck of Cards by Jess Sanders. And then I have a what's it called the hip-hop queens oracle deck by it says clarkson potter and publishers i thought they had oh and it's illustrated oh here we go i cannot say these names written by kathy ian doley i think that's how you say it um, they are on my list on my bookshop, so we, if you're interested, you can definitely head over to the website, look at my affirmation deck of cards list, and make your purchase. So we're going to start off with a butterfly deck. Oh, and I'm super excited, y'all, because I just bought on Amazon a machine that shuffles cards. <laughs> Have not got it yet, but when I do get it, I'm so excited because I do not know how to shuffle, and I just... I just be making a way, y'all. I ain't even gonna lie. I be thinking I can shuffle. I can't. So, the from the butterfly affirmation, the first card I pick says, I let go of the past, I trust in the future, and I accept the present moments. The second butterfly, butterfly card says, my patience is being rewarded. My turn will come. Okay, I do got a lot to say about that. Let's go with the body affirmation. So I picked two cards from each new deck. So the first body affirmation card says, if we all ate the exact same thing and exercised the exact same amount, our bodies would all still look very different. I will no longer pursue a body that is not my own. Breathe in deeply to bring your mind home to your body. I am grateful for the breath that rises and falls in my chest. Okay, so these, um, the hip hop queen deck. So it is an oracle deck, which I'm not going to sit up here and lie and say, like, I know how to do oracles or tarot readings or anything like that. 
Um, I honestly did think they were affirmation cards. So they actually don't have, so they have a subject on the card. So they have a picture, which if you see this on YouTube, they have a picture and then it has a subject, but it comes with a little guidebook. So like hopefully my friends and my folks that do Terry and Oracle cards, y'all yeah, don't come for me. Um, I apologize, y'all. So um, I actually picked Queen Latifah and Lizzo. And so Queen Latifah's subject is respect and Lizzo's subject is self-love. So let's start with Lizzo. So Lizzo, Lizzo self-love, self-esteem, beauty, acceptance, and self-care. While Lizzo's chart-topping success felt like it happened overnight, the Houston bred artist started as a rapper nearly a decade before her first Grammy. When her single Truth Hurts capulated her to new heights, Lizzo shined as a beacon of body positivity, bitter truth, and boisterous sophistication. She isn't afraid of expressing herself in any form or fashion, yet has a personality and inner outer beauty that makes everyone want to be around her. That kind of power is intoxicating to some, but it seems like Lizzo knows how to microdose it with humility. Perhaps that's what makes her good as hell. If you took a DNA test, it turns out that you're 100% fabulous inside and out, and it's time you recognize that. Let your Lizzo card serve as a sign that you should take a few moments and focus on you, recharging with a spa day, an extra long workout, or even a Netflix binge. Remember, self-care isn't some little reward you treat yourself with after nar narrowly avoiding a breakdown. It's hitting the pause button routinely to remind yourself of who you are. So you can lean into that power. Sometimes you feel great until you got to be great. And that's the best time to hit refresh. Oh, that was powerful. Okay, let's move on to Queen Latifah. So Queen Latifah is respect, principles, resolve, hard-headedness, and fight. The year was 1993 when New Jersey's own Queen Latifah delivered the impactful challenge, Who You Calling a Bitch, on her um U N I T Y. Man, I the I, that is like one of my favorite songs. And so when I was reading this, that like song started playing in my head. She was no stranger to that level of gender-driven confrontation. As just a few years prior, she and Moni Love changed the course of women's history in hip-hop with the classic ladies first. Latifah was managed to pivot into so many other fields being one of the first rappers to enter into acting. She's e she's educated the masses, all while still maintaining her title of queen. But Queen Latifah is more than just the sum of her, her parts. Every element of this supreme being commands our attention. It's just another day in the life of a legend. We're told time and time again that respect is never given, it's earned. But what happens when you feel like you've given your all and respect is never returned? Do you proceed in spite of your own insecurities? Even if you may not be looked upon favorably, or do you switch up your own style and let your body language imposter do the talking? It's a predicament to say the least, and one you'll have to tread through lightly. Don't come across as too overbearing in the pursuit of respect, because the reverse will happen. Think like think like the queen on this card. Hold your chin up and straighten your crown. The rest will fall into place. Wow. Wow. Um, I'm gonna start off with the um the hip hop queens. I think this was very powerful and it was very giving um during this time. Um just being completely honest right now, I am just in a weird space in life. I feel very I feel like I've been begging for attention. I feel like I've been begging for respect. And when I say begging, y'all, like what I mean by that is, as I've been on this healing journey, if you've been following me, and if you haven't, go back and listen to last week's episode. I did a review on it. I have just realized, like, I've just been a people pleaser my whole life, and I have constantly done things. It's out of love, but also, too, it's like, it's always been like that little girl in me has just kind of been like, look, like, why don't you love me? Like, I am doing this out of the kindness of my heart. Like, I am doing this out of love. And so asking people to, like, love me. And this isn't just, like, in intimate relationships. Like, this is through business. This is through work. This is through, like, strangers on the street. Like, I have gotten my heart broken 
by strangers on the street who I have literally held the door open or just been nice and they have just not accepted it. I'm like, what? You can't accept a smile? Like, no, thank you. <laughs> and so this last part, um, it's a predicament to say the least and one you'll have to tread through lightly. Don't come across as too overbearing in the pursuit of respect because the reverse will happen. Think like the queen on this card. Hold your chin up and straighten your crown. The rest will fall into place. I just have to be reminded constantly that there, it will fall into place. There will be a time where it is my turn. There will be a time where I won't have to beg people. There will be a time where I will have experienced everything that I, you know, have been asking for. I am slowly getting rid of people who just don't serve a purpose in my life. Not to say like it's any negativity, but, you know, sometimes people be in your life and they just don't belong there. And you you don't belong in there. It's different journeys, different lives. It's not to say anybody is bad or to, like it doesn't always have to be toxic. And I think I'm learning that too. Like sometimes people just don't need to be there. Like, and you don't need to be there either. So yeah. So that was Queen Latifah. Let's go on to Lizzo. So um I like how they talked about self-care and self-care is not just like avoidance but self-care is really allowing yourself to feel how you feel and self-care is really allowing yourself to do what you need to do i think a lot of times on social media and even with some podcasts podcasts they like people come off as so perfect you got to do this you got to do that and me and i think i've said this before like i'm just one of those people where like i want you to see the true the ugly the good the bad the sexy the all of that like i want you to see that because, like, I'm not trying to fake the funk with myself. I'm definitely not trying to fake the funk with y'all. Um, but it's not just an, a reward. Like, self-love is authenticity within yourself. Like, sometimes we really do just have to hit pause. Sometimes we have seasons where we are just still. We're stagnant. And it gets uncomfortable, y'all. But at the end of the day, like we more than likely need that in order to truly like get to the next level i think we're so used to being busy that when we actually take a break that like we make ourselves feel so guilty and i i've worked with clients that are like that like oh like on my off day i slept and i just feel like I, it could have been used for more productivity and i always tell them like while I want you to get your work done, if your body requires you to sit down and ignore the world right now, then that's what you got to do. Like, you don't have to always be busy. And I think we need to unlearn that. Um, sometimes you feel great until you got to be great. And that's the best time to hit refresh. I think, you know, we got to give ourselves grace. We got to allow ourselves to truly love ourselves enough to know that, like, all these rules and just expectations are all made up. And, and sometimes you really just got to let that shit go. Let that shit go, my love. Like, sometimes you just got to do it for you. Um, Yeah, sometimes you just got to do it for you, my love. Let's go on to the butterfly affirmation. So... I let go of the past, I trust in the future, and I accept the present moment. I am trying to be present. I am really trying to be one within myself and be here. I'm trying to forgive myself for the past, and I'm trying to prep myself for the future because I honestly believe that my future is going to hit me, and I'm not going to be ready because um, I didn't give myself that break to just be. I didn't give myself that break to just allow myself that time like I want to be ready and you hear it so fast like things happen overnight things come so fast one minute you're struggling the next minute your dreams are coming true and I want to be prepared not saying I'm going to be a thousand percent prepared but I at least want to have my boundaries set in place I want to have that line of okay like this is what I'm allowing this is what I'm not allowing but being present I think for so long I have always just worried about the future, worried about the past, been depressed about the past, beat myself up for everything that has gone on. When really, like, 
I could just be in the present and just allow myself to just truly be here, be with you, y'all. Like right now, I'm with you. I'm not anywhere else. I'm literally focusing on it. I'm not worried about the time. I'm not worried about what's going to happen in Mexico. I'm not thinking about yesterday. Like I'm like, I want to give my audience, I want to give my followers something to listen to, okay? The second card from the butterfly deck is my patience is being rewarded. My turn will come. I'm going to tell y'all flat out, this is not my winning season, okay? And I said this at the beginning of um, the year. And at the time, I was in my little situationship. And he he used to, he used to get, get a lot of what was failing. And I just had so many issues with my business, with my building, with my publishing, with my book, with my writing. I mean, it was just back to back to back to back to back to back to back problems. And I'm like, what am I doing wrong? What is the problem? I'm like, I'm signing these contracts. I'm paying these people on time. I'm following the deadlines. Why is everything falling through? Why are people playing me? Why are people stealing money from me? Like, why are people taking money knowing they're not going to do anything? Like, what is the problem? And I just remember, like, I was sitting with him and I was just like, yeah, like, this is just not my winning season. And I just got to be okay with that. I got to be okay with, like, this is a learning season. I am learning a lot. It's not a winning season. I mean, I don't think I, like, lost completely, but, like, it's definitely not a winning season. And people always come up to me like, oh, I'm so proud of you. Here, she got faith. It's taking off. And I'm like, I'm glad y'all see that because I be crying over here. She got faith. <laughs> I am so glad y'all see that. But it goes back to I have to give myself grace. So I'm just trying to be in the present. I'm just trying to allow myself to know that like be patient and honestly even with love like y'all like this heartbreak at the age of 30 my god and even like I, I started putting myself back on dating apps I I, I gotta well when y'all listening to this I would have had like my first date from being back on the dating apps um so y'all probably hear about that <laughs> um you know but even with even with dating even with love I'm like wow like Wow. So my time will come. Yes. Come on. Come on, cards. Come on, new cards. All right. We still got two more deck. I mean, two more um, cards to go to go through. So this is from the body gratitude deck of cards. I will no longer pursue a body that is not my own. And the quote that they have. So this card it has a quote at the top and then an affirmation at the bottom. So I read the affirmation first. So the quote is, if we all ate the exact same thing and exercised the exact same amount, our bodies would still look very different. The second card is breathe in deeply to bring your mind home to your body. I am grateful. I am grateful for the breath that rises and falls in my chest. Um, so I started back working out. I will now be working out by myself in my building. I decided that I will be doing dances because I thoroughly enjoy dancing. So, um, I, and I, I believe that if we all ate the same, if we all exercised the same, our bodies would still look completely different. And I do believe that because um, one of the things like with my body, I don't necessarily like lose weight on the scale. I, I lose, um, inches and my stomach has always been a problem. I've always had a gut. I've always had a round stomach. If you look at my father, you look at me, we literally have the same body shape. But as I've been working out, as I've kind of been trying to change my relationship with food, which that's a story in itself, we'll have to do an episode about that. Um, I've been trying, but I have seen changes in my body. I am so in love with my body right now. Like, I'm just loving the way it's shaping out. I'm loving the way it's looking. I'm more confident. I'm appreciating my body. And I'm honestly just realizing, like, this health journey is on my own. Like, you can hire a health coach. You can have accountability partners. You can do all this stuff. But if you are not happy with your body, like, none of that matters. You have to do it for yourself. You have to do it because you really want it. I want to be healthy. That's my biggest thing, like, when I had turned 30, I had got high cholesterol. I had got heartburn. I was tired of being over 200 pounds. Like, I was at a place where I was like, I just really want to be healthy. 
you know, it's scary for me to get older because nobody in my family really lives past like 60. Um, and both my parents died. Like my dad died at 45. My mom died at 55. Like, so as I'm getting closer, like older in age, I'm like, dang, like I may not have too much longer. And I'm not trying to speak that over my life, but that's just the reality of my life. Like, even when I think about my grandparents, like my grandmother, I never met her. She died at 36. My grandfather, I think he died either at 45 or in his fifties, regardless, like, that's probably one of the generational curses I want to break. Like, I want us to be healthy. I want us to, like, live longer. So realizing that my relationship with my body and my relationship with my health is mine. Like, it's just that. It's mine. You can follow all these health and fitness and all that. And I'm not downplaying them. I actually have a lot of friends in health and fitness. And I think they do a phenomenal job in what they do. There's results. I've done their programs. I've gotten the results. But it starts within and I. And that's why healing has been so important. Because in order for me to take my body and my exercise and the physical aspects aspect serious, I have to be mentally prepared for that. Like, it, for me, it started with the mental. For me, it started with the mindset. So um, that's kind of, yeah, like. I will no longer pursue a body that is not my own. So embracing what I got, regardless if there's roles, regardless what the scale says, regardless if that top fit me or not, like I am embracing the body that is forming on me, in me, whatever, because it's me. <laughs> um, I am grateful for the breath that rises and falls in my chest. Like I think holistically, like that's where we're at. We're one, we're mind, body and soul. That's where we got to be. We are at that place where, like, this is my body. This is what I'm doing. And I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful to be alive. I'm grateful to be here. I'm grateful that my body has not given out on me. I have diabetes. Thank you, body, for not having any amputations. Thank you, body, for holding me up every day. Thank you, body, for not having any lesions or anything that is caused by diabetes. Like, thank you, body, for loving me. Even when I haven't loved you, you're still here. You're still fighting for me. Like, I don't think we realize that with our bodies. Our bodies fight for us daily, y'all. Oh, my God. Mm. Oh, okay. I had to take a sip of coffee. So, that was a pretty long introduction. It's been 23 minutes, y'all. So, let's hop right into the episode, okay? So, first of all, can we just give a hand clap? Because it is definitely episode 33. I am so lying. Episode 30, y'all. It is episode 30. Hand clap. Yes, killing she got faith. 30 episodes. We just started this talk show in November of 2021. And we're already 30 episodes in um even with a hiatus we're still 30 episodes in so we probably would have had we probably would have been closer to 40 if i wouldn't have taken the hiatus but y'all know shows be taking breaks honey we be we be needing to do it and i do everything on my own with him and she got faith i don't i don't be having help so when i need my break honey i'm gonna take it that's just where i'm at <laughs> So episode 30, yes. I am so excited about that, y'all. I am so excited. Um, so this episode, episode 30, we are talking about traveling, business, and healing. So, like I said, during this week, I will be in Mexico speaking on the power of grief. And I just want to come to you. I did have a series called Traveling Heals the Soul. <coughs> Excuse me, y'all. Um, traveling heals the soul. And then there's also a chapter in my book called traveling heals the soul. And in that chapter, I really go into detail about just how, like I learned why traveling was so important to me. Why it's such, it's why I have to travel. Okay. Like traveling is a necessity. Using my passport is a necessity at this point. I have to take a couple trips a year because it helps me focus. My goal in life is to take a trip every month and it doesn't have to be international, but I at least want to do like three international trips a year, but every month I want to take a trip somewhere. And then I want to take a week out of the year and just do it like as a healing trip, a self-love trip, just focus on me. Um, and then, like, I want to do kind of like a, a retreat once a year, too. So that's a weekend thing. 
Um, but traveling is so important, one, because it allows me to be still. It allows me to focus on myself and it allows me to really be in a place where I have no, no choice but to pay attention to myself, my surroundings, and my environment. My favorite place in the world is the ocean, okay? I love to travel to the Caribbean. The Caribbean is my favorite. I'm hoping to start traveling to South America, and I'm hoping to start traveling to Africa. Um, I want to go to Kenya, Ghana, Nigeria, Egypt, Tanzania. There are um, quite a few countries in Africa that I want to go to because Y'all know us Americans, they be saying Africa is a country and it's a continent and there are countries in Africa. Um, so if you were wondering why I said it the way I said it, I know that uh, Africa is not a country. Uh, but I do have a list of countries in Africa that I would like to visit. And I want, I need to learn like what all do I need? I know I've had friends go to Ghana. They had to get certain vaccines, certain paperwork. And so I want to do that. Uh, one of my dream locations is Cuba, y'all. Like, I want to get out to Cuba. And one of my friends, um, I was on her show. And she told me that it was actually possible because she had been to Cuba. So I don't know. That trip might not be too far away. But yes, traveling. Um, and also, too, like, when it comes to the ocean, like, if you read the Bible, if you're a Christian, which I definitely say I'm a Christian. I know I don't fit some of the Christian norms, but I don't be caring. Um, in the Bible, it talks about how, like, the ocean is in the palm of God's hands. And so I always just think that's cool. That's so cool. Like, I envision when I'm in the ocean, I'm, like, literally sitting in the palm of God's hand. And just like embracing that, like I feel just so much love. I really feel like I'm supposed to be in the ocean. I'm gonna tell y'all, I, I, when my time, when my chapter on earth has came to an end, I wanna be on somebody's island. I wanna be living on an island. I honestly don't really wanna live in the States for the rest of my life. I wanna move to an island, I wanna move to a country, I wanna live in a village. Like, I definitely want that type of lifestyle. I want community. I want the kind of like the minimalist, um, the minimalist lifestyle, but like in a Caribbean type of way, if y'all get what I'm saying. <laughs> um, in April, my brother and sister, brother-in-law, my aunt, we all took a business trip to DR, Dominican Republic, and we stayed in a little little local town we stayed in the airbnb it was so beautiful y'all like the culture the family like it was just so beautiful to walk outside and see families playing dominoes seeing every house had music playing people was dancing in the street people was drinking beers it was so beautiful and that's just the type of life i want like i want that community style so when i travel and i experience that type of stuff it really puts perspective into me i love learning about culture i love learning about history i love learning about other people i love it so much so traveling is so essential in my life so if my future husband is listening to this baby please go get your passport if you don't have it okay please go get your passport because baby we are traveling matter of fact why i'm here let's just talk about that okay because um i was just on facebook and it was talking about like small wedding, big reception, even bigger honeymoon. And so like for even for a long time, like even when I was in my teens, I always said, I just want a courthouse and I just I just want a courthouse wedding, go to the courthouse, have our witnesses. We can do all that little fun stuff at the party, like the first dance. The, I just don't want to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on a wedding. But we can have a big old party. I already know the menu, buffalo chicken sandwiches. And then for my vegan friends, we'll have buffalo cauliflower. We'll have an open bar. And, of course, we'll have, like, other stuff to eat. But, like, the main course will be buffalo chicken and buffalo cauliflower. But, like, I want to take, like, a six-week honeymoon with my husband. So, I feel like my husband will probably have kids just because I'm older and I'm just at that age where like most people just have kids. And if I'm dating older, like obviously they might have kids. I might look out and he may not have kids. I may not have kids. Hey, but 
I'm just preparing myself. So I want to do a six week vacation. The first three weeks, I want to do it with just me and my husband. I just want him. I just want to experience him as my husband. We explore the world or whatever. If my husband does have kids, then um, the second half of that six week, that six weeks, will pay for his kids and their mom. To fly out, we'll even like we'll pay for their airplane. We'll even pay for like their room, and then um, the mom can bring the kids. We have a big family thing. Um, that might be controversial, so like y'all just keep your opinions to yourself. Like that might be controversial. If I ever meet him, and if I'm ever in this predicament, we'll have that conversation when it comes. But this is just my vision right now. So they'll come, then we'll have family time, me, my husband, and the kids, and we'll have that. And then that way we would have had six weeks. If my husband does not have kids, then I literally just want six weeks with my husband. Like, I want that time. I want that alone time. I want us to get to know each other. Like, I want it to be so intimate. So, and I think that just speaks to, like, who I am as a person. Like, I just love to travel. I love intimacy. I love exploring, experiencing, like I just love new experiences. And that would just be a life, a lifetime memory. Think about all the pictures we would have, all the experience we would have ex- like had to explore in those six weeks as a newlywed couple. Like I just think that would be so beautiful. Okay. So now that we're done talking about my fantasy love life. <laughs> mm. Um, the other part that I want to talk about is business and healing. So I was asked to go on this trip to speak about grief. Honestly, I did not think I was going to make the trip. I had my friend who she was telling me that she does conferences every year. She had prayed about doing an international conference and it happened this year. And so she was telling me they're like, oh, and honestly, um, when she was telling me like, oh, you need to be there. It's a women's conference. I was actually thinking about like, find a way to get my sister out there. I'm like, oh, my sister needs to be there. So once that went by, I really, I knew the conference was happening. I really didn't think about it. I was seeing her posts on Facebook and Instagram. I'm like, yeah, she's doing her thing. And then she hit me with a, so are you, now mind you, this is like five to six months after we didn't have this initial conversation about this conference. She was like, so are you going to be a keynote speaker or not? And I was like, what? You want me to be a keynote speaker? She was like, yeah, like you need to come. You need to you need to speak on grief. You need to show these women, like, what does that look like? How is that going? Like, you need to be here. So I was like, okay. So I had to hurry up, buy the plane ticket. I had on my passport, y'all. Yeah, like, I stay ready with a passport, honey. I am passport ready at all times. But I had to hurry up. Mind you, this is around the time, like, Airplane tickets are skyrocketing, and I'm like, bro, like, if they keep skyrocketing, I don't know if I'm going to be able to make this, like, but by the grace of God, like, I made it, I got it, I, you know, I got, I got it, I made it, so I've been preparing for that, I've been preparing for this conference, I've been really, like, working on what I'm going to say, what activities I'm going to do, and just things like that, like, I have really been working hard because I'm really, really excited about this. Like I love one, I love a business trip because one, you get to I love a traveling business trip because one, nine out of ten times you get to explore a new area, but also to like you handling business. So this gonna be a networking opportunity. Two, I'm going to Mexico. I ain't never been to Mexico. I was literally trying to figure out like how the heck can I get to Mexico? And then I'm going to a place where like I don't really hear too many people talk about going like it's not I'm not going to Cancun, but I've just do, been doing a lot of research on Mexico anyway. And so I just want to get out there and just explore it. So I'm really excited. I saw too. So I, I won't be in like a local area. I'll definitely be in a tourist area because we'll, we'll be at an all inclusive resort. And I'm on the adult side. I've never been to like I've been to resorts. I've never been to like an adult resort resort. So I'm super excited. I got a king size suite, oceanfront view, honey. I am excited. So I'm definitely like ready for this. I'm ready for this experience. But this is where healing comes in. So it's been a lot. It has been a lot, y'all. It has been a lot. I have been going through some transitioning, some transitions as far as like people in my life, my business, relationships, and I have had 
to one deal with myself with things that I have allowed. I have I have had to learn to give myself grace. I have had to learn just a lot. I've also had to let a lot of people go. And so one of my friends is going on this trip. She recently lost her mom. Y'all, let me tell y'all. She lost her mom. Then she lost her grandmother on her um, father's side. Well, both her grandparents are technically on her father's side. That's a whole different story. But pretty much she lost her mother and then she lost two grandmothers at the same time. So she was re- like, so she was really going through it. Another friend that is going, she has just been growing in her self-love and she has just been growing in as a person. And so like she, I used to call her my life saver, yeah, because I swear she saved my life. She actually is like the honorary manager of Healing She Got Faith as well. So if you've been following, you probably already know who she is. Then my little brother is coming and then my childhood best friend is coming as well. And so... I know for a fact, all of us have been through some things. All of us have been dealing with life. All of us have just kind of been in quite a few transitions. And so one day while I was journaling and I was actually listening to a podcast and I listen to this podcast often. It is spiritual shit. Um, Let me find it, y'all. Because y'all should definitely check her out. Oh, excuse me. Um, okay, so yeah, so Spiritual Shit by Aaliyah Lovely. I was listening to one of her podcasts and she was talking about how she went to Mexico for her honeymoon. And that was a really good episode because she kind of talked about how it really wasn't a good, like it really wasn't a good trip. Like it wasn't terrible, but it really just wasn't the trip that she thought, um, that she, that she thought um, it would be. So I can't remember which episode, but I'm going to tell you how to listen to episode 169 and 170s because that's what I did. I listened to episode 169, why I felt the universe and I had my back. And then I listened to 170. So uh, it's called why is it so important for us to reclaim our consciousness right now. And so um and she's in, in those episodes, they're pretty deep. But I want, like I said, one of them, she talks about like going to Mexico and the realizations and, that she had while she was there. So while I'm reading this, I'm like, that's just so ironic that like in a couple weeks, I will be in Mexico. And she's like telling, she's telling her audience the, the experience that she had. And I'm like, wow, like I think I was supposed to hear this. And also, too, like, I had listened to the Black Girl Bravo um, episode, uh, I'm sorry, podcast, where they were talking about some, they were talking about relationships, too. I also listened to another podcast, and a lot of it just has to do with healing, self-love, relationships, and just, like, it all starts within And so I was journaling one day and also too, like I'm getting back into like journaling and writing to God because like that's really how like I started off praying was I used to just write to God because I just didn't want to speak out loud. Now look at me, I got a whole podcast. That's crazy. Um, But like having realizations, even with my relationship with God, having my realizations of like why I'm not the Jesus freak that I used to be back then, just having those moments of like, okay, this is why certain things don't look the way they used to look for myself, okay? And um, in that reflection, I kind of was just sitting there like, I believe that this trip is business first, but it's going to be a healing trip. There's a lot that I have to address, I have to acknowledge, and then I have to release. And I believe with the people that's going and the people I'm going to meet, because mind you, this is a conference, so there's other people from around the world that will be there. Also, too, I'm a keynote speaker, so y'all yeah, know I'm about to be networking. I'm about to be in my network bag, y'all. Yeah. Um, but even with that, there is a realization that um, there's just a lot of stuff. Like, this may not be a turn-up trip, which, not, y'all, yeah, I'm going to have me a cocktail. <laughs> a couple of them. But this may not be the turn up trip, but this may be the trip where 
my business gets put on the map, but my heart finally gets to heal. I finally get to mend my broken heart. I don't know if that's going to be the case. Y'all get the reflection at the end of the month. But what I'm saying is I felt in my reflection that I was told, yes, this is a business trip, but this is also going to be going to be the trip that heals you. This is also going to be the trip that, that you are going to focus on yourself. Everything that you have been asking for. What did the car say earlier? Your time is coming. Now, I don't know what this trip is going to bring. Again, y'all will get there with the reflection. But what I'm telling you and what I'm preparing myself for is business first, and then we're healing. We're going to have some fun. We're going to get our cocktails. But, honey, we are um, addressing, acknowledging, and releasing. So that's pretty much what this, this uh, trip is going to be, honey. Like five days in Mexico doing what I need to do to prep for the rest of my life. I am so serious about healing right now. I am so serious about being healed. I am so serious about breaking generational curses. I'm not playing with myself. I'm not playing with anybody else. If you are not on the same wavelength, we are not okay. We are not cool. We are not friends. Like, and I mean that, like, I need people who are ready to grow, who are ready to heal, who are ready to break these generational curses. For so long, I have been around people who are stagnant, who are avoiding, who just want to mooch off of me. I am ready to forgive that part of myself. I am ready to grow from that part of myself, honey. I am addressing issues that I've never addressed, and I'm addressing um the hurt and pain that has been caused, y'all. Like, I keep telling y'all, I have been in therapy two to three times a week. Two to three times a week. I'm not playing. I am not playing. So, that's kind of what I, all I got for y'all today. Traveling business and healing. Because I think all three of those are good. We don't necessarily always put those three in the same category. But I am. Because this is just that's just where my life is, y'all. That's just where I'm at right now. So, um, like I told y'all last week, you know, with me not being on the radio platform, my shows are a little bit shorter, which I do prefer them to be shorter anyways, because y'all got stuff to do. Y'all don't, y'all don't be needing to hear me talk for an hour plus, honey. <laughs> okay. So housekeeping, I still have some book bundles, signed book bundles. Remember, um, I am the author of Everyone Has a Story. If you purchase a book bundle, it comes with the novel, the guided journal, and the nine-month fillable planner. All of those are physical copies. You can buy them off of Amazon. Everyone Has a Story is on Kindle, but if you buy them from my website, you will get a signed copy of Everyone Has a Story. And it's actually quite, it's, it's actually a vulnerable copy. So like I call it the author's version that I think is really cool because you guys get to see like a first time author, the mistakes and just like it's it, it's like the authentic writing. Like when you read that version, it's almost like you're talking to me. So I think y'all should go ahead and definitely order from my website, get you a signed book bundle. Um, we have new journals. You can check out the website. We, um, we have new journals that we're selling. You can also go to the website and check out our bookstore, y'all. So if y'all looking for books, if y'all want to purchase any affirmation cards, Go to healingshegotfaith.org and at the top, you'll see the Healing She Got Faith book shop. And then last but certainly not least, we have a blog that is released every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Central. So just remember that the podcast is released every Monday at 3 p.m. Central and Wednesdays, the blog is released every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Y'all, we are healing. We are loving ourselves. We are practicing authentic self-love, honey. Do not miss this train, okay? You do not want to miss out. So I want y'all to go out there, enjoy your week, have a great time, love you the way you love the world. Know that I love you. I appreciate all my listeners. I appreciate my followers, y'all. I love you. I want you to love yourself. Go out there and make someone smile. All right, y'all. Happy healing.